and uh, Rudy gets the way Chattanooga plays, has made a contribution of those two goals uh, a couple of games ago, so now I want to see how he does tonight. So here we go, we are underway. And it's Detroit City with the opening kickoff up ahead. Jimmy Filerman playing on the left side as a wing back tonight for Detroit City. You often see him on both sides, left or right. So Chattanooga will try to mount some pressure. Peter Fuller said he anticipated Detroit City coming at them early, trying to disrupt possession. And L.A. Force really put out a blueprint on how to do that last week with the 1-0 loss here in Finley Stadium. They absolutely did. They pressed hard right from the get-go. And we were talking about that and wondering if they could keep that pace up for the entire 90 minutes. Well, they did, and uh, it was tough for both teams. They were exhausted when they finished the game. Around the back, this is Nick Spielman, the captain, Richard Dixon. Lifted over the top, streaking down the right flank is Hofstadter. Hofstadter cuts back to his left foot. It's broken up. Filerman has to quickly clip it away. And back at the feet of Stephen Carroll. Was our pregame player to watch. Does so much for this team. Keeps them organized. Dominant in the air on set pieces. And here comes DCFC. Patricio Botello Faz, the man they call Pato. Gets chopped up by Tate Robertson, and that's quickly cleared away. And there's a finger wag for Richard Dixon from referee Alexander Zelyaskov. So we mentioned earlier that uh, Richard Dixon was the captain. He's gone back. The arm armband's gone back to Juan Hernandez as he's back on the field tonight. But uh, it was originally going to be Richard. But uh, I think either of them be great captains. They're both solid players, and they really are the backbone of this club. So. Yeah, lots happening tonight. I've got to mention, too, Sean Hofstadter's birthday this week. And also Nick Nelson, our reserve goalkeeper. So, happy birthday, yeah. And I've got to mention also Nick Aston, one of the old time champions. He ended his run as night banging drum. Free kick in a dangerous area for Detroit. It's whipped in around the far post, chested down, and still in action as it's finally cleared away by Chattanooga. And the pressure will be maintained by DCFC. Not a team that'll take a lot of risks early in a game, Detroit. So putting on the pressure here as it falls back to Richard Bryan. Armando Quezada, the goalkeeper in place of Nate Steinwasher. Connor Rutz. Lifted in for Filerman. Reddington snatches it out of the air and rolls it out quickly for Chattanooga to try to mount something. Cutler Coleman battling against James Vaughn, and the Englishman wins it, but it's got back quickly by Coleman. For Hofstadter, Daniel Jackson on the quick combination. That's Vaughn going through the back of Sean Hofstadter. No whistle. Maxi Rodriguez. Tendai Jadeda. Backwards for Carroll. And Alec McKinley wins it in midfield, but loses track over Ran it for a Detroit City throw in. I'm going to throw in the mix one more player to watch too, Lucas, and that is Tendai, number 12 in the defence for uh, Detroit City. Plays on the Zimbabwean national team, which is pretty cool. So uh, keep an eye on him, see uh, what he can do tonight. One thing Peter Fuller had talked about all week long, so important not to concede first against this Detroit team because of the way they can clamp you down get you to step out of your comfort zone and then make a mistake from there and then fully come back and take advantage of it. So Chattanooga will be pressing 
for the first goal, certainly, of the night. Trying to avoid facing a deficit at any point. Certainly easier said than done for a team that has not lost in about a year of play. That's uh, quite a record, but if we can be the ones to break it, nobody will complain in this stadium tonight, Lucas. Daniel Jackson shakes off Jadada, tried to play it forward for Coleman, who has his hand up, wanted a whistle, and I think he'll get it. Be a Chattanooga free kick around midfield. Yeah, referee's called in playback for that one. So a good place for a free kick, Chattanooga. Can reset a little bit and uh, work on one of their drilled free kicks. Spielman. Richard Dixon. It's a nifty touch by Hofstadter to get himself into space. This is Chattanooga trying to find a seam in a compact Detroit city. Daniel Jackson. Hofstadter. Had Kasak streaking down the flank and Kasak had to come back for it inside to Jackson. Muscled off the ball by Rodriguez, and here's Detroit City. That's broken up by Juan Hernandez. I think there's a bit of muscling on both sides. Chattanooga realizing they can't sit back and they have to go in a little more firmly than they have done. Rodriguez. Carroll. Jadada. Offside flag goes up for the first time today on a long ball intended for Pato up front. It's a Detroit City team that, when it comes down to it, set pieces often how they pick you apart. Last time these two teams played each other, that played a massive role as Chattanooga fell 2-1 to one in the final game of the spring season, had a penalty kick saved by Nate Steinwasher late. Yeah, what well, would have been a two to two draw. So on both sides of the ball, defending set pieces and trying to take your advantage and scoring them. A key point for Peter Fuller and Chattanooga is going to get one here with the first Chick-fil-A corner kick of the game. Yep, that's a Chick-fil-A corner kick. Eat more chicken. So yeah, absolutely. Nate Steinwash is a penalty save. So already decided the game in the last time he played Detroit up a hand track. So uh, without him here, maybe that can make a difference. We will see shortly. This portion of the broadcast is brought to you by the Henry Lofts. Chattanooga looking to create its first real chance of the evening. Spielman tried to head it down. Gets it back into a dangerous area, but no boys in blue there to take advantage. It does fall back to Sean Russell. Carroll stands tall. Kasak. With the one-time cross. It sails. Yeah, a bit too much on that one. That's a little too strong. But uh, Chattanooga's threat looking good. They're starting to get the ball together, keep possession, and worry the DC FC defense. Now they have to make something happen and get some more shots on the goal at the end of the process. But moving in the right direction. Jadeda Rodriguez. A little too strong on the ball played wide to Connor Rutz. And it will be a Detroit possession. Here's Filerman to throw it in. Rutz doubled up. Chattanooga able to win it back. The midfield battle so key tonight for a Chattanooga team that's had issues with turning it over, unforced errors in that part of the field, and a Detroit City team that certainly wants to take advantage of those mistakes. But what type of battle do you think we get in that area between these two? Similar formations and shapes, sometimes a similar playing style, but 
the end of the day, what do you think makes the ultimate difference when you think about these two specific teams? Sometimes it can be a lucky break on the way the ball goes. Uh, just a deflection and taking advantage of that. Both teams can take advantage, but it can just be that that much simpler. As luck as the <laughs> a simple bit of luck can make so much difference to the way the game goes. Um, but yeah, you're right. They're both set up the same way, same formations. A lot of skillful players on both sides. Really, it could be taking advantage of opportunity, uh, a loose ball or a deflection or a free kick, and then that can turn the game. But so far, evenly matched, Lucas. Hernandez, who had to come into the lineup last minute, was not scheduled to start tonight. In for the injured Brett Jones. He'll track it down near the corner. Squared up against Lewis. This is Kasak. Left foot whips it in. It falls to the 18 and stopped by Hofstadter at the 6. A turning shot is clipped and picked up. By Kizada, a fantastic defensive play by Richard Bryan tracking back. And that was what I was talking about, was the deflections. They went Chattanooga's way, and they took advantage of those and got the shots in. Uh, and they've had a little more pressure in the box than DC so far. Once they've got in there, they've started taking the shots. They aren't getting through to the keeper yet, but they are taking the shots, and that's what you do. It's all about getting those shots in. <laughs> Pretty football's great, but it doesn't win games. <laughs> And here comes one of those set pieces we've discussed for Detroit City. So many players that are good in the air. That was part of the reason why Alec McKinley got the start in one of those six roles. And I see McKinley along the 18. Be key in defending these set pieces as we move into the 12th minute. No score yet. James Vaughn to take it for Detroit. Lifted in. There's a man far, uh, back post and... Header straight up. Still in a dangerous area. And Detroit going backwards. It's picked up by Juan Hernandez. Not much of an opportunity for a counter with Sadie draped all over him. And Hernandez turns it over back to Carroll. Rutz tries it one time. It's kept in play by Pato, and he's able to shake free of James Kasak. Rodriguez. Vaughn. Jidada. Again, Vaughn. Rodriguez with a nice little touch forward to Pato, and Reddington wins the race to punch it away. Good strong shadow from Reddington there. That could have gone badly and uh, given away a penalty but uh, he kept it clean and took the ball not the man so we throw to DC on the near side Jimmy Filerman the 24 year old from Virginia opts to play it short and it's Chattanooga winning a free kick yeah good confident goalkeeping from out Reddington there very impressed with that she wants both teams to reset Well, you'd say the first quarter hour or so has gone the way uh, Peter Fuller would have wanted it. Yep, no goals conceded, and uh, both teams, you know, feeling each other out, trying out formation changes a little bit. So, uh, happy so far. A goal would be nice, but happy with <laughs> nil nil so far is good. McKinley. Dixon. Blasted ahead to Hernandez. Had a nice turn, but the touch is a bit heavy. And Lewis is able to play it back into midfield. This is Vaughn. Pato. Daniel Jackson, an opportunity to start a break here for Chattanooga. Has Hernandez streaking down the left part of the field as Hofstadter collects it on the near touchline. Floated back inside where it's picked up by Bryan. Well, Peter Fuller wasn't shy about it this week as well. He said, we need three points in this matchup. A tall task, but 
after falling last week, a 1-0 loss to L.A. Force. Two losses on the season. Chattanooga and their coaching staff knows the spring season, the way it ended, wasn't up to their expectations. And any time you go in against the defending champs, tough to say you need three points, but that's exactly what we've heard from Peter Fuller all week. Well, that's right, and that's something that we can do. I think Chattanooga can do it in the current uh, setup and the players they've got right now. And uh, so last weekend's game against L.A. Force was just that one goal, which was the penalty kick. Otherwise, it's fairly evenly matched, and Chattanooga getting the better of the shots. But it was it was those turnovers we talked about earlier that made the difference in the game. And uh, again, we're seeing a little bit of that tonight, a few unforced errors, which is not uh, something they want to see. 28 unforced errors against L.A. last week, a number that took a major increase from the 11 Chattanooga gave up in the 3-0 win over Maryland Bobcats a couple of weeks ago. So certainly the biggest thing they want to improve here tonight as Hernandez. Yeah, easier to say when you're watching up here, but when you're on the field and making decisions in less than a second, it's very hard to keep those things moving and keep the, you know, the passes consistent. But uh, you have to do that to succeed at this level. Rodriguez whips it in. Reddington covers his post, but it's well clear for a goal kick. Check that. It's a Chick-fil-A corner kick for Detroit City. First one of the match for the visitors. Gerardo will be the one to take it. Lift it in straight to Reddington. That's a good save. Very confident. Coleman. Field is flipped to Russell. Kasak, who got off to such a scorching start to the 2021 fall season with two assists in the opener, 3-1 win over Stumptown. Coleman. Robertson. Now Spielman. Trying to get focusing on possession right now. Trying to make sure they uh, don't give it away needlessly. And see, look a lot more confident by keeping the ball. This certainly improves your confidence as a player when you're on the field. It was a good find by Spielman to get Hernandez, who's outside the boot, cross in, falls to a Detroit City defender. Chattanooga able to win it back quickly. And CFC slowly but surely building up this possession in Detroit's half. Dixon. Russell and Hernandez go back and forth. And it's given away. Chattanooga able to win it back quickly, starting to become a theme here in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing, Luke, as they're focusing on that possession rather than just hoofing the ball and hoping something's on the end of it. They're actually passing it boot to boot and uh, trying to keep things moving and focus on that possession and slowly creep up the field. Little dummy for Dixon to run onto it, but ball travels a little too far. I still DC sitting back and waiting for the Chattanooga to make those unforced errors. It's almost as if they're just waiting for a mistake, uh, isn't at it? At this point, they are. They're conserving energy uh, about halfway through the first half, and they're just waiting to see what Chattanooga do. Over the top to Jackson. He's able to bring it down. Two Detroit players around him, and it's off the shin of one of them, and Stephen Carroll, who's able to get it cleared for the moment. Kasak, and the danger is still there for Chattanooga. Russell tries to drive it in. It deflects back to Kasak. He'll take it to the goal line, lift it in towards Hofstadter, and it's back with Coleman. This is sustained pressure from Chattanooga much better. This looks really dangerous for them. Cutler Coleman. Long ball. Ooh. And that is deflected hard off of Jimmy Filerman for a Chattanooga 
Chick-fil-A corner kick. I felt that one. <laughs> Certainly. It's almost surprised to see Philemon walking around like nothing happened. Exactly. So Chick-fil-A corner click. And uh, this portion of the broadcast brought to you tonight by Free Bets. Tate Robertson, the former Stumptown man, will deliver the corner. Here it comes, back post, headed backwards. Jackson has it teed up, might have gotten off of a Detroit defender. They will say it's a goal kick. Yeah, that was a good play from Chattanooga there. Taking and advantage Det it, just could not get the finish. Detroit City players vehemently <laughs> questioning referee Alexander Zelyaskov. Not sure about what. But in the end, it will be a goal kick for Armando Quezada. He's really come on nicely, Daniel Jackson. Two mm -hmm. goals in his debut. The 3-0 win over Maryland Bobcats brings some pace that was needed up front for Chattanooga with the front three. Can really open things up for the other strikers around him. Straight into Sean Russell. McKinley's header darted right back to Russell. Scoreless as we near 22 minutes at Finley Stadium. Detroit City at the top spot in the Nisa table, traveling to Chattanooga as that danger is cleared by Richard Dixon. Chattanooga in third on the table, four points back of Detroit as we speak on six. An opportunity to jump New Amsterdam for second place if NAFC cannot get a result at Cal United who currently is seventh in the table, was jumped by Michigan Stars after a scoreless draw, Michigan and Chicago, settling a nil-nil 90-minute result earlier today. Yeah, I think the action tonight is going to be in this game, deciding the way the table turns out. That nil-nil uh, draw doesn't change a whole lot of the bottom end, but this certainly might make a difference for either team, because if uh, Detroit get to win, they'll be streaming away from all the other clubs in the league and if Chattanooga get to win they'll be uh, catching them up and knocking on the door behind them so uh, could make a lot of difference to the table by the time we get to bed tonight cross well over the head of the oncoming Jimmy Filerman for a Chattanooga goal kick but you're right certainly the biggest Nisa table implications are right here in Finley Stadium around the league it is Stumptown visiting Maryland that game Kicked off about 22 minutes ago, and it's Stumptown with an early lead, 1-0. LAFC is at 19.04 later tonight, and New Amsterdam, as we said, at Cal United for one of those late kickoffs. Yeah, we'll be hosting 19.04 in a couple of weeks here in Chattanooga. Um, next weekend, we're going away to LA Force for a rematch of that last game. So that should be interesting playing on their home territory. And then we're back here on the uh, on the 18th. So uh, lots more soccer coming up at Finley Stadium. And uh, we will bring you every game we can live from here. So we have, yes, yeah, San Diego 19-4 on the 18th here. So we look forward to seeing them making that long flight from the West Coast. Say there was a deflection on the shot by Tendai Jadada that just scuffed out over the goal line. So it's another Chick-fil-A corner kick for Detroit City FC. Chick-fil-A, eat more chicken. So now D Detroit trying to chain things around. They're starting to get more pressure on Chattanooga in this section of the game. Chattanooga's turn to uh, defend once again. James Vaughn will take the corner.
With both hands up, he delivers. Daniel Jackson was the one who climbed the ladder to get ahead on it. And Sean Russell able to track it down, but it is off of Russell for a Detroit throw-in. And we'll have our first booking of the match, and it goes to Sean Russell. His arms are up in bewilderment. It's like something he said, I think, to the referee. Must have been. Because he hasn't really made a hard challenge to anybody yet. It may have been a bit of a chit-chat <laughs> the referee for want of something more polite. <laughs> so Sean Russell picks up the yellow as we get ready for a Stephen Carroll throw-in. Got foul vision. Kaeperman, White, and McGarvey Eye Care can help with that. Juan Hernandez, the one getting ahead to it there. And Chattanooga. Rising to the occasion so far when it comes to defending these Detroit set pieces, obviously the night is still young. Hernandez flicks it on with his head to Hofstadter, but Feilerman does well to track it back, and he's worked his way all the way to the right side. Starting this game as a left-sided wingback, weaves his way into the box, and finally Robertson, the one to break it up, and offside flag is up. Or was that a foul on Detroit? Yeah, it was a foul, I think, on that one, Lucas. So 27th minute, Chattanooga with the free kick inside its own box. Chattanooga gets reset, relieve a bit of the pressure. Detroit pushing quite hard there for the last five minutes. And uh, again, not able to make something get a shot in. Again, the pressure's there. Both sides are getting the pressure in, not getting that final shot away, which means the defense is doing a good job. I think we may find at half time the shot count is not that high, even though there's been a lot of activity in both penalty boxes. Kazada takes some time on the ball. A little bit close there. With Juan Hernandez barreling down on him. Wonder what type of, type of mental adjustment Juan Hernandez had to make. Not in the starting lineup. Thought he would get into the game, but certainly not as a starter. And then moments before kickoff against currently the best team in Nisa, he's sent out there. Well, that's the mental part of the game. We, we discuss that every week just about. The mental part of the game is so important. And I'm sure Juan is always ready for that. And that looks like a field goal rather than a soccer goal there. So a uh, goal kick to DCFC. A little wide left there from Cutler Coleman. Yeah, be optimistic. <laughs> yeah. Coleman's been busy tonight, working his way inside as that right wing back. He certainly has. Burned a lot of calories. All the players burn a lot of calories, even though it's not as hot as it normally is tonight. It's only in the high 70s, but uh, everybody working hard. And uh, it's interesting to see we have those trackers they have in the uh, high-end leagues in Europe. The uh, the body shirts they wear that track all the calories and how far they run and everything else. be nice to see those on these guys just to look at the stats, but uh, we haven't got, got that yet. Of course, the good side of that is we haven't got VAR either, so that's definitely a blessing. So... That's uh, something we might get in the future. Carol. Gerada. Richard Bryan turned around by Hofstadter. And now it's Detroit City's time to uh, keep the, the possession, working on that. The passes, the give and goes. Their turn to do a bit of that. Carroll blasted ahead and connects with Bryan, and suddenly danger posed by Detroit City, the save by Reddington. And it's cleared for the moment. Rodriguez tracking it in the corner, and it will be a free kick for Detroit City. Just feet away from the corner flag. Great save from Reddington there. Just a reflex to push it away. But yeah, Detroit suddenly out of nothing, looking very dangerous with that long ball from almost the halfway line. That did happen with the snap of a finger, didn't it? Yeah, a really. long ball that traveled about 50 yards from Stephen Carroll and Richard Bryan with the first shot on goal. It really did. And that's what we were saying before the game started, that uh, 
make a slip and they will punish you. And uh, that was a good chance. Cyrus Sadie, as we take again. a look. Great save. Cyrus Sadie will stand over the free kick. Inside the first half hour at Finley Stadium. The left-footed delivery. Falls back to Vaughn. Picked up by Jadada. And it's a Chattanooga throw-in. Good defending from Chattanooga there. Still nil after 30 minutes. Here's Rodriguez who scored the penalty kick that had Detroit leaving Chicago as winners 1-0 last week. Just an excellent distributor. Plays as a six but covers a ton of ground for Detroit City, Maxi Rodriguez. And here's Filerman. In Detroit going back to back to basics, really, focusing on possession, getting those passes to each other. Lands control the pace of the game, which is why it's an important skill to have. If you're working on your soccer, that's one thing you should always work on, accurate passes. This portion of the game brought to you by EPB Fiber Optics, our broadcast partner. Thank you, EPB. Coleman having trouble settling it. Picks it up at the touchline. Filerman wins it back for Detroit. Rodriguez right at midfield. Just flicks forward to Connor Rutz. And it's a Detroit free kick. You'll see those two combining a lot tonight. Rutz and Rodriguez. And that time it wins DCFC a set piece. Yep, looked like Alec McKinley was uh, playing that clean. But the referee saw it as a foul because he had his leg high up. And so uh, Detroit get the benefit of that one. Carroll will join his comrades in the box and it'll be sent in by Vaughn. And that's over the goal line off the head of Matthew Lewis, the former New York Cosmo. So we were saying earlier, Lucas, about the, there's plenty of action. The ball is being put into the box, but not as many shots as we'd like to see just yet. The, both defences are stifling the shooting chances. We've had a couple of good ones, but uh, not as many as you would normally expect in a game between two teams of this calibre. Been one save forced tonight, and it was Richard Bryan forcing one on Chattanooga's Alec Reddington. The ninth all-time meeting between these teams, a matchup that goes back to the NPSL days for both sides. Five wins for Detroit. They have the advantage. One draw and two Chattanooga wins. The last one coming August of 2020 in Detroit. Kasak. Spins away. And zigzag passing allows Chattanooga to reset at the back with Richard Dixon. Robertson frustrated. He wanted to play that quickly. Spielman. Chattanooga's turn to slow things down a bit. This is kind of rocking in the midfield between Chattanooga and DC, but not getting into the boxes as much. It's more of a, a middle third kind of game right now, Lucas. 
does feel like the pendulum swings, a, doesn't a it? Little Spells bit. of possession back and forth. Yep, yep a little bit. Um, but it doesn't swing one way for very long. Which shows you how well matched these two teams are. Both teams just feeling each other out. Have not played in a Nisa season competition since the final game of the spring. A 2-1 win by Detroit. They're both aware how much is on this game. I think they just try not to do anything stupid and give away the points or give away a goal. Because they're going to have to look twice as hard to get it back. Because once one team goes ahead, they're going to probably sit on the lead rather than uh, play more openly. It's Pato surging forward in a crafty tackle by Tate Robertson. No foul. Cleared away. That was a clean tackle. Pato not protesting too much. Ten minutes and stoppage time away from the break. Still scoreless at Finley Stadium. Daniel Jackson making the run as the ball over the top is from the foot of Robertson and Chattanooga will have a free kick in a dangerous area. And we could have the first booking of the night for Detroit City. We do. Haven't seen the yellow yet. Uh, did the referee get the yellow card there? I thought he did. I think Zelyaskov will keep it in his pocket. Well, okay. <laughs> Free kick will come from about a 30-yard distance. Yeah, well, the Detroit players talking to the referee. Again, that never makes any difference, but they would like to do it. I've yet to see a referee change his mind. Good place to take a free kick from, too. Chattanooga can score from here. They should drill this kind of free kick from about 25 yards out. They should have something in their playbook for this. It's currently James Kasak, the only one over the ball. Referee can't get the wall to go back 10 yards. Juan Hernandez telling him that's not 10 yards. You wonder, given how good Detroit is at defending set pieces, if that would yeah, it's not lend yards. itself to Chattanooga going for goal here. Could be a big moment in this one. 38th minute, Chattanooga FC. Standing over a free kick in a scoreless game against Detroit. Be a good time to get a goal. It would certainly change the, uh, the balance of the game completely. Looks like it'll be either Robertson or Kasak to step to it. What are they doing? Long, short, still talking about it. Robertson makes the approach. Goes for goal straight into the wall. It's tracked down by Jadeda. And Chattanooga right back with it. So the boys in blue will look to carry out this spell of possession through the first half. I think Detroit should watch some previous CFC games because they're making sure they don't let, give James Kazak too much space. A lot of teams have done that and, and paid for it, but tonight they're not. <laughs> speaking of, that will be a yellow for time wasting given to James Kazak. Okay. It's Chattanooga's second of the night. As he flipped the ball into the stands after the throw in was awarded. A little bit of frustration there, I think. To Detroit City, that's right. Yeah. They'll move it down the line, throwing at midfield. Saw Detroit make something out of nothing on a long ball earlier that prompted the first shot on goal tonight from Richard Bryan about midway through the half. Wonder if we'll get any more of those type of opportunities here in the last five plus minutes. Okay, he's like going down with a bit of a knock there. Looks like he uh, pulled a muscle or something. He's walking slowly on the far side like he's not quite himself.
Jackson flicks to the near side for Coleman. Able to keep it in play. All the way back to Alec Reddington. Spielman. Nobody in the neighborhood on Russell's long ball forward. And Juan Hernandez finds himself all the way at the back line. More of an effort to go over the top here from Chattanooga. Maxi Rodriguez trying to shake off Cutler Coleman, and he does it, winning a free kick. Chattanooga still trying those long balls from the back, but uh, the height of the D.C. defenders is uh, certainly to their advantage right now. If they're going to play that kind of ball, they're going to have to be a little more accurate with those or try and bring and play from a shorter distance because the D.C. are reading a lot of those and breaking up the attacks as those long balls float in. Well, it's that center back partnership of Stephen Carroll and Matthew Lewis, the latter of whom on the ball now, that makes it so tough to go over Detroit City. That's absolutely right, and that's why we said we should watch Stephen Carroll tonight because he can make the game and uh, control it for D.C. And he's, he's doing just that. 42nd minute at Finley Stadium. It's with Carroll. With a rocket that falls right at the feet of Richard Bryant. Bryant able to cut it inside. He's in the corner of the area. Three Chattanooga defenders converged on him, but gets the cross in, and the header is in. Detroit City takes an early lead. It's Patricio Botello Fas, otherwise known as Pato, putting the visitors ahead 1-0 in the 43rd minute. What a great move from Detroit City. Chattanooga not covering that one as well as they should do, and the free head of a Pato at the back was a nice and simple knocking for him. Puts Detroit one up at the, as halftime comes up. Quite a time to score a goal as you're about to go into the locker room. Let's see that again. So a couple of Coleman at the back, but Pato gets away from him very easily and just slips it past Reddington. It was Jimmy Filerman with the assist and Pato with the finish. Just minutes before the break, Chattanooga concedes and they trail the defending Nisa champs. So now a huge challenge on the shoulders of the boys in blue. Peter Fuller talked about it, just how tough it is to overcome deficits against this Detroit City team. Once they find that lead, they very rarely give it up. And that's the challenge presented to Chattanooga now. They'll have 45 plus minutes to do it as we near halftime. Yeah, we saw it in the last game where they were two up against Chattanooga. They did get the one goal back, but uh, it wasn't enough. And uh, Detroit, once they get a lead, as you said, they hang on to it tenaciously. Got one goal back in that game. Nearly got a second. Mm -hmm. The penalty kick was saved by Nate Steinwasher, who is not in goal tonight for Detroit City. So Detroit's dilemma is, do you sit on a one goal lead or do you go for a second? Now we'll see what they do if they push for that. But in the meantime, Chattanooga have to attack. They cannot hold back. Well, if you're Chattanooga, what do you expect from Detroit as they weigh those two options? I expect them to sit it until half time and then come out fighting in the first 10 minutes of the uh, second half and try and go for the second and put the game to sleep. Here's okay. an opportunity presented to CFC, a free kick. About 35 yards away from goal. Again, not quite scoring range, but certainly dangerous. And they should be able to uh, put together a set piece here and attack the goal fans on their feet in the stadium encouraging CFC to come forward yellow card has been given it's the first one of the night given to Detroit and it is defender Matthew Lewis in the 45th minute absolutely if you got foul vision Kaplan Wider McGarvey can help with that so another Chattanooga free kick 
And it's Kasak and Robertson once again. Last time it was Kasak going for goal. Went straight into the wall. This time it's Robertson floating it in. Has a man. Spielman was waiting for it. Carroll forces the corner kick. That was a better for a kick from Chattanooga there. Make, going for the, uh, the pass into the box and following on with the header. Chattanooga with the corner now. Another Chick-fil-A corner. Let's see what... Uh, Chattanooga can do will they keep the pressure on here we've hit the 45 minute mark there will be two minutes of added time here at Finley Stadium and a chance for an equalizer before the break ball in right at the center of the six and it falls to Jackson who mm. clears everybody yeah might have been better to hold on to that one and push it back into the box so at least 90 more seconds of stoppage time presented by HHM. Need more time for your business? Contact HHM for all of your accounting needs. So Detroit City will look to see out this lead, and Chattanooga will have to go back into the locker room and reset a little bit, Simon. Absolutely. We'll see if uh, Coach Fuller gives them the hairdryer or what he does to uh, encourage them to get back in the game in the second half can they create one more opportunity as Quisada comes well off his line and sees it out over the goal line I think this, uh, Detroit City have to run the clock down here and wait for that uh, half time whistle referee is signaling Quisada to uh, keep it moving not to waste time Fifth match of the 2021 Nisa fall season. Chattanooga, two wins, two losses coming in. Detroit City, three wins and a draw. And the leaders of the Nisa table on top, 1-0 over third place Chattanooga on the 43rd minute goal by Pato. It's his first of the Nisa fall campaign. Bit of an early birthday gift for Patricio Botello Fas. Turns 25 in four days. Handful to deal with up front, and his header past Alec Reddington. Currently the difference as we are seconds away from halftime. And there's the whistle from Alexander Zelyaskov. Chattanooga trails at the break. One play and he's laid up there. It's full of energy, so this should be great. Here we go. Game's on the way. Hasn't played since the Independent Cup. Nine goals in the last seven games he did partake in. Now will be eager to make an impact against the defending champs. Marcus Nagelstad playing in an underlying role as Daniel Jackson, the nine. Behind him, Hofstadter and Nagelstad. So we'll look to see who split out right in that wingback role. As Chattanooga looks to be maintaining its 3-4-3 shape. Here's Detroit City. Intended for Rodriguez and to turn over there, forced by CFC. Hernandez came in hot to pick it up. One right back by DCFC. Cleared away. It'll be a throw in near midfield. Quickly goes Russell and is played right back to the Virginian. Already seeing Chattanooga playing at a different tempo, Lucas. They have come out ready to attack. Aaron pass that covers a couple of levels of the field but falls straight back to Jadida. And this is Matthew Lewis. One goal on the season, Matthew Lewis, 25-year-old from Missouri. Nagelstadt's first touches. Opts to play it safe back to Reddington. Russell. Hofstadter in the neighborhood, but not much trouble there for the back line of Detroit. Yeah, a bit optimistic that long pass. So uh, Detroit City with a chance to reset, but uh, Chattanooga come out uh, playing fast and hard, and that's good to see. This portion of the broadcast brought to you by HHM Accountants. Thank you to them for their sponsorship. 
And the substitution, the only change of the game so far at halftime, Arcus Nagelstad on for Cutler Coleman, presented by Haygood Farms. Looking for alternative recovery methods that ensure you achieve the good and healthy life you deserve? Contact Haygood Farms and Cultivated in Tennessee. So Chattanooga, a clear effort here to build out of the back. And Kasak looks to switch it. It's chested backwards for Dixon. Trying to catch up to it. And Jadeda won't win the free kick. Hernandez has a chance to thread it forward and create something here. Lifted in, intended for Jackson. Was making the central run. Kasak. Spielman. And Hernandez, who has to chase his own touch a bit. Daniel Jackson, unable to bring it down. What kind of impact does he need to make in this second half as Detroit wins another free kick. I'd like to see Daniel doing some more shots on goal. That's what he's best at. And he always stays calm under pressure. And he was there too, trying to win the ball back. But uh, Detroit out muscling him a little bit there. He needs to either get into space or be ready to muscle back. Um, I think if I was coach for I'd tell him to get into space and be ready to receive the ball to make the strike rather than trying to be part of the attack. I say you need to be away from the attack in space to receive and pop the goal in. Both of Chattanooga's shots tonight came from the foot of Daniel Jackson, both well clear of the bar. A polished, experienced player. That was drafted in the 2014 MLS Super Draft by Real Salt Lake. Has experience in the state of Tennessee. Played at Cumberland College in Lebanon in the middle part of the state. Has had quite a soccer journey, but... You bring on a player like that to make a difference in games like this. That's right. Absolutely right. With him and Nagwish out on the field, and really haven't seen him play together that much, I'm looking forward to seeing how they interact. Uh, if they make a good striking pair like Kane and Son at Tottenham or that kind of thing, I'm hoping if they can do that, then uh, that will make Chattanooga, once again, a strong team to beat. That's going to fall to James Kasak, who has a little bit of time to take that space, but the touch just a little too heavy. Rodriguez. Ropes it wide left, and that's for Filerman, but a good sliding challenge by Dixon. Yep, referee played the advantage. There was a foul in the uh, Detroit City half. The referee played the advantage because they were attacking. Quick talking to to Juan Hernandez. Three bookings tonight, two for Chattanooga. It's Russell and Kasak, and then Matthew Lewis for Detroit right at the cusp of halftime. We will see the referee talk to Juanito quite a lot tonight because um, those who follow soccer will know that the referees are instructed to talk to the captains rather than to the individual players unless they actually have to. So they try to direct all their information to the captain and let him get it through to the rest of the team. So it doesn't mean Juan's in trouble. It just means he's, he's the channel for the communication. That's a great ball. Splits two Chattanooga defenders, but Reddington times it out well. Hernandez handed the captain band with just a moment's notice before kickoff as he came on for the injured Brett Jones, who picked up a knock during warm-ups. Initially was Richard Dixon set to captain tonight's side. But certainly not a spot Juan Hernandez would be uncomfortable in. Oh, no, definitely not. That's, uh, that's his natural position. <laughs> Spielman backwards to Reddington. Had Pato coming onto his left shoulder and did well to get it all the way to Daniel Jackson, who loses it right into the center circle. And it's back to the goalkeeper, Armando Quezada. It was a big loss for Detroit coming into this game. Nate Steinwasher, the best goalkeeper in this league, had put together back-to-back -to -back shutouts in the last two outings. Missing tonight's matchup, but for happy reasons, as... He and his family <laughs> celebrate 
a new member. Absolutely. One thing I'm thinking, Luke, is it's because they, the uh, Detroit City haven't got Nate Steinwasher behind them, they may be uh, playing slightly more defensive to give Quesada an easier game and trying to make sure he doesn't get uh, as much stress as he might do. Not saying he's an incapable keeper, because he's obviously a great keeper, or he wouldn't be number two for Detroit City, but they may be subconsciously trying to uh, work a little harder in defense. Well, it's certainly big shoes to fill. It's rare to hear a coach rave about a goalkeeper the way Chattanooga coach Peter Fuller raves about Nate Steinwasher. And now it is Armando Quezada in those shoes, the 27-year-old from California. McKinley battles it right. This is Daniel Jackson. Squares up Jadada. And now Chattanooga with numbers forward. Left-footed service. Nearly falls to Hofstadter. Instead, it's headed left by Hernandez, but Kasak unable to keep up with it. So we're seeing Daniel Jackson at the top of the box there in the early part of that play. And uh, I would expect to see him more in the box waiting to receive the ball rather than making the play happen. But he's uh, dropping back a little bit. I think mainly to make sure he gets his share of the ball why a lot of the attackers do drop back. Tate Robertson trying okay. to make the run, and he does force yeah. the Chick-fil-A corner kick with the pressure. Nice header there, but it wasn't in the goal. <laughs> Still, you can't have it all, can you? So, yeah, Chick-fil-A corner kick to Chattanooga FC. Let's see what they do. Bit of an unforced error there from Carroll. Rare to see. Yes, indeed. From the Detroit captain. And now CFC will look to take advantage. 55th minute. Facing a one-goal deficit. It's curled to the back post and punched confidently by Kazada. Another corner kick. They'll switch sides, and Chattanooga will try it again. Kazak on the corner. This is good pressure in Chattanooga. They need to make something happen out of this pressure, though. James Kazak tees it up. The Virginia Tech product. Head on it. It's in oh, the corner, yes. and it's in the back of the net. And who else? Marcus Nagelstad picks up right where he left off, and it's all squared up at Finley Stadium in the 56th minute. That is super sub. Marcus Nagelstadt making it one apiece. We're going to watch that. Look at this great goal. Here we go. Like a bullet off his head. Right in the back of the net. Fabulous. Kasak will pick up the assist. His third of the season from the corner flag. And Marcus Nagelstadt. He'll make it. Ten goals in his last eight games, and the night's not over yet. Now we have a game on, Lucas. One apiece. Neither team's going to want to give up any ground here. And it's game on in East Tennessee. That Chattanooga goal brought to you by Rodizio Grill in downtown Chattanooga. Text GOAL to 423-455-1002 and win a complimentary full Rodizio. Pressure still on from CFC. That's floated to the six. Nagel shot there waiting for it. McKinley tees up the one-time shot, and it falls out to Richard Bryan, who hits the turf, kept in play by Sean Russell. And CFC will try to continue applying the Look pressure. What a turn by Nagelstad. Lines it wide oh. left of the post. He is back with a vengeance. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that's the exact spark that we talked about being needed at halftime. And we've got it. This game is on the fire, Lucas. It's waking up. Wow. <laughs> Watch that again. Look at that. Just a few feet away from the left side of the goal. Absolute hitting it hard. And DC had two defenders on him, and he still got bo off both of them and got the shot away. That's the kind of striker that makes a difference to a game. That is a game-changing play. He's made a difference everywhere he's been, whether it was in Providence College before he was drafted by NYCFC in 2015. His time in Norway, 104 goals in 126 matches there in the Norwegian second division. 
And that form has carried over to Nisa as Marcus Nagelstadt picks up his first goal of the fall season just moments into his fall season debut after a calf injury that ruled him out the first four matches. That's going to be a free kick Detroit on a late challenge there by McKinley. He's pleading his case, looking to see which Detroit player that is that's struggling to get up. Number 21. And that would be Maxi Rodriguez, Maxi Rodriguez who's a been, critically important player for this side. He is. He's been a, a thorn in Chattanooga side through the whole of the first half. So Rodriguez will get looked at here in the 58th minute, and there will be a yellow yeah, card yellow. for Alec McKinley. Yep. Third of the game for Chattanooga. He joins Kasak and Russell. It was a pretty firm challenge, but uh, I've seen worse, and the referee's not done anything, so this time he did. Rodriguez will walk it off. Two goals in four games so far this season. Plays that defensive midfielder role so well for Detroit. An excellent passer. An excellent decision maker who scored the winning penalty kick against Chicago House. He'll be helped back to the near sideline and will look to shake it off as he tries to re-enter. But for the moment, Detroit down to 10 men. Chattanooga a lot more physical, Lucas, in this second half. They really have been coming out a lot harder on, on Detroit. I think they were physically giving away the ball a bit too much. Yeah, look at the fouls count's gone shooting up. Eight to seven. It was only, what, two to one before? <laughs> that's a lot of fouls in the first ten minutes of play. <laughs> so that, that stat tells you what you want to know. Chattanooga suddenly started going for it and uh, pressing harder. Maxi Rodriguez back on the field. Here's the delivery from Vaughn. Reddington snatches it out of the air, urges his teammates forward, but elects not to play it quickly. Big round of applause from the uh, assembled fans in the stadium for Alec Rankton. He's been uh, confident there when the ball's come. He's been under pressure. He's come out and grabbed it every time. Well, now you can feel the increased sense of urgency in these two sides as they'll both look for a winner with half an hour to play. A top three battle in the Nisa table. Detroit at the top spot. Chattanooga in third. An opportunity to jump New Amsterdam for second place if CFC can nab all three points. Nagelstad tried the crafty combination to Kasak running in behind. It was broken up, but Chattanooga wins the throw. And a nice little back heel. That's the team playing with conference. They do things like that. They're confident enough to play a back heel blind, and there's somebody behind them ready to pick it up. That's a sign of a team that's gelling and playing well together. Sean Hofstadter with the assignment of getting this throw in into the box going to be a long throw Hofstadter lets it fly into a crowd headed straight back to him and they'll do it again yep Detroit easing the pressure by giving a throw in away but uh, Chattanooga keeping the screw turn that's a good long ball oh <laughs> Wouldn't that have been great if that had gone in, just floated it over the keeper's head, but uh, didn't come off. So an hour into the game, one apiece, and this portion of the game brought to you by free bets. A 43rd minute goal by Patricio Botello Faz, otherwise known as Pato by his teammates, and in the 56th minute, an equalizer by the halftime sub, Marcus Nagelstad, to pick up the goal-scoring form that he left off after picking up an injury before the season opener of the fall campaign. Here is McKinley. Operating on a yellow card, sprays it right, Tate Robertson. Nobody there for Chattanooga. And that's out for a goal kick. Yeah, much more aggressive this this play, this second half, Lucas, and the crowd are loving this. They are on their feet for most of the game and just uh, urging Chattanooga on to take the lead. So 30 minutes, this is uh, edge of the seat stuff if they keep it up. <laughs> Always a good one when these two meet. Last time a 2-1 win for Detroit. Last Chattanooga win came in August of 2020, 2-0 the score line in Michigan. And here come the visitors. Jadeda is cut off by Spielman. Now here is Richard Bryan. Man goes down in the is box. That Whistle, it's going to be a free kick a free right kick? outside oh. the 18. Right on the edge of the box. Wow, that was dangerous. 
And Detroit yeah, players protesting. They want the spot kick. Yeah. Certainly for a team as efficient as they are on those set pieces, you would understand why that's the preferred situation here. You know it. Richard Dixon getting a talk into from the referee. Connor Rutz was the one to go down, and that's a red card a red, show to Chattanooga FC. A straight red card to Richard Dixon. That's amazing. Richard Dixon will leave the field, and Chattanooga will go a man down. Oh, my. Let's see that again. Was that really a red card? It looks like a coming together of two feet together. It wasn't intentional. Slightest bit of contact there, and Connor Rutz goes down, but either way, in the eyes of Alexander Zelyaskov, it's prevention of an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, and here yep. is an opportunity for Detroit well, that's what to take another says. lead. That's what the rule says. It's uh, If you are the last defender and you deny an opportunity to score a goal, then uh, that will be a red card. But it didn't look like it was malicious. It was uh, just clipped him as they were both coming together. Should have been a yellow, maybe, but not a red. So uh, Sean Ross are getting instructions from Coach Fuller quickly and to uh, restructure the defence. This puts Detroit City in a great spot to inflict some real damage on Chattanooga. And now a big moment for Chattanooga to try to avoid a set-piece goal compounding the fact that they've just gone a man down. Connor Rutz and James Vaughn are the Detroit duo standing over the set-piece right at the 18 an incredibly dangerous spot for well, chattanooga goalkeeper alec reddington almost the entire chattanooga squad in the wall there is only one player over vaughn to take it saved by reddington the follow-up is blocked off wow what drama great save from reddington there and it will be a free kick chattanooga but either way, CFC survives the moment. They don't give up a goal, but they do give up a man. Richard Dixon back to the sideline. CFC down to 10 men. And now, Simon, we stress the importance of just having Juan Hernandez on the field as Dixon, initially your captain tonight, before Hernandez was the last-minute call-up, has that's, now left the game. Well, that's right. I mean, this is uh, where Juanito's experience comes into play, and he makes such a difference to the team. He knows how to drive them on. He knows how to reorganize 10 men. Uh, this is a scenario, obviously they practice this, it's not the first time it's happened and they just know how to reset themselves and reform into a strong unit. Whether that gives them enough capability to attack as well as defend, we will have to see. So Kazak getting the knock which calls the foul and uh, we'll see what Chattanooga do next. They have fresh men warming up, so Coach Fuller may bring on fresh legs, now we're past the hour mark. Phil. Still four substitutions available for Chattanooga. They've only made one, and it did make the ultimate difference as Marcus Nagelstadt scored just minutes after coming on. Replaced Cutler Coleman at halftime and scored the equalizer in the 56th minute. But now Detroit certainly will sense the opportunity to grab three points on the road against a 10-man Chattanooga. Tate Robertson running out of real estate there. Just goes off the edge of the field. Coach Fuller with the ball, but he isn't going to kick it back in. <laughs> sure he'd like to. Had a little bit of time since the red card given to Dixon in the 63rd minute. What have you seen as far as Chattanooga's shape, personnel, any differences after the expulsion? Nothing obvious yet. Obviously, they'll have to play more, slightly more defensively. Uh, they'll probably rely on Russell and Spielman to uh, tighten up at the back. And it looks like McKinley is dropping back to be the third defender, which will leave a slight hole in the midfield. But nothing being taken out of the attack, just a uh, slight shift in the midfield. But as like I said, they practice these things. They talk about all the scenarios in practice and in team training and team talks. So this won't be totally foreign to them. Sixty seventh minute. A one one game. But will it stay one one? That is what we want to see tonight. <laughs> now
Matthew Lewis will come back for it. Now, if it stays on one, of course, it won't change the table a whole lot. I think it will keep both teams where they currently are. But that's not what these teams are playing for. They're playing for three points. <laughs> well, you're right. It would keep Chattanooga exactly where they are, tied on points with NAFC, if that were the case. At the moment, coming into this game, Chattanooga one point back of New Amsterdam with six on the season. That's Rodriguez at the goal line, gets it into the near post, and Reddington does just enough. And again, good goalkeeping there. Detroit City appealing for the uh, the penalty. As Rodriguez gets knocked over, but uh, Reddington's going for the ball, not the man. Play goes on. Back with Maxi Rodriguez. Pulling strings for Detroit City. Richard Bryant. Back post. Reddington has it covered. It's been an authoritative night for Alec Reddington, conceding just the one goal on an excellent cross by Filerman and the headed finish by Pato just before halftime. Well, you have to feel like the keys to the game are even more important now than they were in pregame, Simon, as far as avoiding costly mistakes, unforced errors in the middle third against a team like Detroit that will take advantage of them better than most. Now you have to do it with the man down. That's absolutely right. It makes it a little bit tougher. And uh, Chattanooga have to uh, use the space wisely, not give the ball away. Just be a little bit more cautious, but you can't be cautious and win a game. So it's that... You know, what do you do? Do you attack? Do you, do you defend? You have to do a bit of both. And that's where the great, great teams come forward and make the difference. So this will be a test for all of them. Every time a team is out of 10 minutes of test, no matter how many times you've rehearsed it, it's going to happen. So a uh, couple of substitutes waiting to come on for Detroit City. They've got uh, Venegas waiting to come on and Espinal. Venegas, a defender, Espinal, a midfielder. So Detroit City at the feet of Matthew Lewis. Forms one of the best center back partnerships in this league with Stephen Carroll. And it's allocated wide to the left. Here's Rodriguez. Cuts inside on Hernandez. Quick exchange and it falls to Brian. Left again. Vaughn. Brian. It's given up. But right back with Detroit City. Chattanooga starting to sit back now. This is Cyrus Sadie. Rodriguez tries the nifty turn. Spielman had it sniffed out and he wins the handball. So we will see those changes here. And Darwin Espinal, the former Tampa Bay Rowdy and New York Cosmo, comes on to take out James Vaughn here in the 71st minute. And it will be Richard Bryan coming off for Kevin Venegas. For Chattanooga, it is James Kasak leaving the field and the newcomer Daniel Jackson heading back to the bench. So a little more of a defensive change mm -hmm. from the home side. That's right. As they now have uh, Nagelstadt on the field, I think Coach Fuller feels he has his, his striker and Daniel Jacks can take a breather. So each team has made two changes, still three more that they can make, but all have to be made in the same window as they've already sent players to the line on two separate occasions. At least Chattanooga has Detroit City with just the one. That's right. So De Silva in the back line, fresh legs for the defense, which is a good thing. And uh, that should allow a bit more space for the midfield to move up as De Silva takes on some of the extra work 
in the back. It is De Silva coming on yeah, to for Daniel Jackson. My mistake. That's all right. Well, she replaces Dixon. Ultimately, if you he's moving around the triangle, it's Dixon out for <laughs> Jackson for De Silva. <laughs> Right, so he takes the spot of Richard Dixon on the field, who was sent off in the 63rd minute. It is a little reshuffle. So Caio Da Silva, a two-sport athlete, when his time at Albany, now will be trusted to help protect this 1-1 scoreline. Pato, the Detroit goal scorer tonight. Back to Pato at the goal line. It's rolled straight to Hernandez for a turnover, but out for what would have been a Detroit throw-in if not for the offside flag up on the near side. Yeah, I've I'm, I'm enjoyed watching De Silva play this this season. He's been very good, Lucas, and uh, he's really not getting a starting position because we have such a strong defense with uh, Spielman and Dixon and Russell, who are very, very solid. But uh, I like seeing him play, and I'm always glad when he comes on because he does uh, work his socks off when he's on the field. Former Birmingham Legion player, Chattanooga went up against Legion in a friendly, and they actually liked what they saw from De Silva so mm -hmm. much, they mm -hmm. signed him almost immediately after he was cut from Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Yep, and he's been a good signing. As I was saying, the strength of the team means he doesn't get to play as much as he would like to, but uh, that's because we have a, a strong defense. So Chattanooga now needing to stand tall as we're under 20 minutes to go in regulation. And Detroit City will certainly press for a winner with the man advantage. On the near side, Rodriguez goes straight in. Russell, his clearance goes straight up. Kasak able to protect it out for a goal kick. Charles Chattanooga reset there. 75 minutes played, one apiece. 15 minutes to go. Should be a very exciting 15 minutes. At what point, if you're Chattanooga, do you tell yourself, okay, sit back, settle in for the draw? I think in the last, if you get in the last 10 minutes, eight, eight to five minutes in, you probably say, well, we may have to go for one apiece. But uh, the coach may tell them that, but the players are going to want to score goals. Um, that message may not get through. They may want to get the three points, especially against Detroit City. If it was a, a different team, they may just settle back. But Detroit is like a drudge match almost, and we'd like to get the points off them. And I know the fans down there are extremely loud right now, and that's got to be driving the players on. This portion of the broadcast brought to you by the Henry Lofts. Quick look around the league as Maryland and Stumptown are tied 1-1. LAFC 1904 yet to kick off. NAFC and Cal United yet to kick off. But Stumptown and Maryland with the same score line that we have here in Chattanooga. And now here comes Detroit surging forward. It's Espinal motoring into the 18. Tries to slip it forward for Rutz. It falls to Pato. Has a sea of CFC defenders in front of him. Looks to float it on the far side for Filerman, and it's cleared away by Robertson, at least for the moment. Hofstadter comes back to pick it up, but instead it's won by Venegas. Rodriguez. Back to Venegas, the 32-year-old from California. Has only been in the game for about four minutes of play. Cross off the back of McKinley. Detroit really are camping out in Chattanooga's half right now, trying to get that winner. Rutz to Sadie. Sadie, he's got Venegas on his right side. Ops to go oh. for Espinal, who goes for a goal. And Reddington safely saves it. A very fine save from Alec Reddington. The crowd loves that one. Let's we'll see that again. Watch this, how fast he moves. Look at that. Just super quick. Alec Reddington, one of the most pleasant surprises Peter Fuller has had in his time at Chattanooga. A community college product that, you know, the goalkeeping position, one that once you grab a hold of it as the starter, mm -hmm. 
You keep it. You keep it. <laughs> he's right. done exactly that. He has. He's been very strong, very successful. Throw in for Chattanooga. It's their first action in quite a while deep in Detroit's half, at least since the red card to Richard Dixon in the 63rd minute. Russell will take it. They'll get a few numbers forward. Caio Da Silva stays back near midfield. Ball in from Russell. Detroit all over it. And it does fall to the feet of a Chattanooga player. And it's straight into the arms of Quezada. It was Nagelstad who had quite an opportunity right at the penalty spot. Yep, he really had a good chance there. Could not get the power on it to get it past the keeper. But uh, I think he was surprised everybody else if it fell to his feet. And he uh, <laughs> just had to react quickly. Couldn't get the power behind it. Reddington powers it over everybody. Yeah, Reddington's going to want to keep the ball as far away from himself as possible for the rest of the game. <laughs> Venegas. Lewis. Jadeda. Espinal. It's into the box for Rutz. Sean Hofstadter is trying to make something happen. Gets it out for a throw in. Detroit City bringing on two forwards. They are obviously not going to hold back unless they're going for the win. They are bringing on uh, like Matthew, Jazzy Matthews and um, Yavi Steinvosher. So they are probably changing out the forwards for fresh legs. They are really going for this. So we'll see one Steinwasher tonight, not the one we thought we'd That's see, right. and the goalkeeper Nate, but instead his brother Javier. And he takes off Jimmy Filerman, who had the assist on the first goal. For Chattanooga, it is Ryan Marcano coming in for Alec McKinley in the 80th minute. Lots of changes going on here, folks. Stay with us. We'll get this updated. <laughs> and the second change for Detroit City is Yazid Matthews, the 25-year-old from South Africa, replaces the Detroit goal scorer, Patricio Botello Faz. So the two that combined for Detroit's opener in the 43rd minute out of the game in Filerman and Pato. And Detroit City has made four of their allowed five subs. Chattanooga has made three. And they've opted to go defensive with the last two. Down to ten men with under ten minutes to go in regulation against the defending Nisa champs, the leaders of the Nisa table in the fall season. That's blasted ahead for Steinwasher. His first real action of the night is up against Sean Russell and tries the crafty back heel towards Venegas. But Russell stays on his feet. Great play from Russell there. Looks like Chattanooga have got uh, Marcus Nagelstadt as the uh, sole striker. 20 combined fouls on the night, 11 of them to the visitors. He's going to shoot. Those stats are going to shoot it up. <laughs> Kasak on the back of Steinwasher. And for the moment, looked like an opportunity for Detroit to get out on the break, but not an accurate pass to the middle of the field for Matthews. And now it's Robertson on the far right side for Chattanooga. Cutting into a crowd, able to wiggle through it. Here's Nagelstadt on the 18. Flicks it right. Chattanooga building something here in the box. Can they create an opportunity? It's out for a corner kick. Good play from Chattanooga there, ducking and diving and winning the corner. Not uh, just sitting back and defending as we thought they might do. 
So this is a Chick-fil-A corner chick corner kick, eat more chicken. James Kasak will take it. Eighty third minute. Chattanooga down to ten men against the best team since the inception of Nisa. And they can keep the pressure on here. As Spielman, standing just a few feet away from his head coach Peter Fuller, directing traffic a bit as Sean Hofstadter comes back to throw it in. And I think it'll be one of those signature long balls mm -hmm. from the Fort Walton Beach, Florida native. Yeah, these were as good as a, a free kick, these long throws. Here it comes from Hofstadter. Falls out to Hernandez, who just tries to head it to himself and track it at the corner flag, unable to do so. Long shift tonight for Juan Hernandez who, as we've said, was a late addition to the lineup. Really, coaches were looking to get him a rest, Simon, mm -hmm. as he spends so much time well, on the field. Exactly. He's, he's you know, the man who plays the most minutes for Chattanooga FC. And uh, with Margaret Stack coming back, it was time to give him a rest, but it wasn't to be. <laughs> and not only that, what he does with the academy here at Chattanooga, what he's done in his time as a graduate assistant at West Florida, mm -hmm. sometimes will average six hours a day on the field, not even including training with Chattanooga FC. So... Absolutely. No doubt his fitness is great, but uh, it does take it out of you. And you can't do that nonstop and, you know, expect not to need some resting time. But here he is in the 85th minute wearing the captain's band against the top team in the Nisa table. That's why he's such a popular player. All the fans love him. They know he puts in so much work. And here he is. There he goes again. <laughs> motoring forward through the middle third. Kasak. Squares up Venegas, tries to take it to the goal line. Angle for the cross isn't quite there. Rutz shut it off, but it is another Chick-fil-A corner kick. And now Chattanooga has flipped the script a bit, though they're down to 10 men, applying some of the pressure here against Detroit. Yep. Not what you would expect, the team of 10 men being the ones getting the pressure on, but Chattanooga doing it and uh, going against the script. How wary do you have to be here, given how good Detroit can be of taking advantage of mistakes and picking their spot on the counter? You have to be very careful indeed. Detroit have the lone striker up front with Sean Russell marking him. I think that's Venegas. And he's got the fresh legs, so Sean Russell's going to have to watch out if there is a deflection out of the box. Robertson drives it in. Ball bounced around inside the six. Chattanooga players want a handball, and it's cleared out to the Chattanooga bench on the near side. Detroit having to hoof that away rather than uh, pass it up to a striker. Yeah, feeling a bit of the pressure. Eighty-six minute drama at Finley Stadium. Absolutely one apiece. Chattanooga down at ten men. You don't want to miss the end of this game. <laughs> Don't even think about missing or blinking while this is on because there's something going to happen in the last few minutes. Hofstadter goes short. Nagelstad tries to dance out of the pressure from two Detroit players and ends up a Detroit throw-in. So Chattanooga trying to set the tone for a road trip next week to L.A. Force before they return home to play San Diego on September 18th. Referee calls a foul there. Brings the play back. And now numbers will go back into the Chattanooga half. As we've got less than four minutes to play in regulation. Peter Fuller wearing out the ear of fourth official Adam Desai after that free kick given at midfield. Matthew Lewis standing behind it. Jadeda. Left-footed service. Floats in. Hernandez was in there. And it's collected. No, instead let out by Steinwasher. 
and it will be a goal kick. So Javier Steinwasser thinking it would be a corner kick for Detroit. Mm -hmm. Let it roll, but Alec Reddington will take what he's given here in the 88th minute. Detroit looking to get out of here with a result before heading back home to take on New Amsterdam, who somewhat unexpectedly is at that second spot in mm -hmm. the NISA table. They've really come into their own in this league after a tough start. Yes, they have. They've been a good team to watch, and uh, I think Detroit looking over their shoulder at New Amsterdam. Down the line, Detroit goes. Steinwasher nearing the goal line. Russell in front of him gets it squared up, and it's a scissor oh. kick goal to take the lead. What a finish by Yazid Matthews. In the 88th minute, Matthews taking the lead. Not what we were looking for at Chattanooga at all. But uh, good opportunity goal there. Well taken. The first goal of the 2021 Nisa fall season for the 25-year-old South African. He came on just moments ago in the 80th, and he makes a difference eight minutes later. With a phenomenal finish inside the box to get past Alex Redd those Alec Reddington. Those fresh legs making the difference. Let's see that again. Look at that. Just, yeah, gets the volley and has time and space to take the shot too. Chattanooga just eventually worn down by DC's over and over attack. And uh, Chattanooga with a bit of a mountain to climb now. With only a few minutes to go. Not sure how much extra time we're going to have. Not a whole lot, I don't think. Um... Looks like we're getting four minutes of added time. Is that enough time for Chattanooga to get a equalizing goal? Room for one more sub if you're Chattanooga, and majority of them have been a defending options after going down to 10 men. It could be a change that provides some type of goal-scoring threat as Chattanooga looks to, at this point, try and play for a draw. Marcano. Robertson streaking down the touchline, catches up to it. He muscles Rutz off the ball, but Rutz continues to play it while on the ground, which will give Chattanooga a free kick, and that will be a yellow card, I believe, for Connor Rutz. Yep, he was uh, hacking away with his legs even when he's lying down. Um, referee not like that at all. That was dangerous play. Well, it looked like he was reaching for the back pocket. I don't know that he actually showed the yellow. But either way, Chattanooga with an opportunity. Looking at tonight's attendance, just a shade under 2,000 people in the stadium tonight, 1,946 in attendance. And we got a substitution late in the game. Brian Bement coming on to replace Juan Hernandez. A little bit late to bring on Brian. I would have brought him on a little bit earlier, but he gets a chance to play now. Also looks like... Damien Rodriguez gets to play as well tonight, number 28. They love what Damian Rodriguez, the youngster, the 18-year-old, provides as an attacking spark. Can he make a difference here? Free kick delivered. Bement, I think, got on the end of it in his first action, and now it's picked up by Rodriguez as he tracks back. Four minutes of added time is what we have. As Chattanooga down to 10 men, trailing 2-1. to one. Ball in by Rodriguez. It was De Silva who got ahead on it, and it eventually and a, yes. fell into the back of the net. Yes, it's a goal. And it will count for a Chattanooga goal. It will count. I think the D.C. players are looking for an offside there. There was hesitation from everybody, there including was. the Chattanooga players. Including us. <laughs> but that was a goal. That one stands. Let's take another look. Please. No, no, the goal is disallowed. No, okay, that's the confusion. Everybody in the stadium is confused from us down. <laughs> well, let's take a look at what transpired there. Well, first, the... Well, that's all that the way back the, in the 63rd minute. That's the penalty shout. So we'll guess. see if we can get you that replay okay. on the chance. But in stoppage time, the goal is disallowed. So Chattanooga didn't even see who really it fell to to bury the finish. Might have been Tate Robertson standing on that right side. But either way, here comes Kevin Venegas for Detroit City. Chattanooga having put in Rodriguez and Bement for Haygood Farm substitutions. If you're looking for alternative recovery methods that ensure you achieve the good and healthy life you deserve, contact Haygood Farms, hand cultivated in Tennessee. As we play out at least two more minutes 
of added time. And if you need more time for your business, contact HHM for all of your accounting needs. Well, the crowd's on their feet for this one. A lot of excitement in the crowd in the stadium tonight. Can Chattanooga pull off a miracle and make a difference? That's a Chick-fil-A corner kick for Detroit as they just look to see this thing out. And they will not rush to take this one, will they? They will go as slow as they can. Detroit scored in the 43rd to take the lead just before halftime. Chattanooga responded with an instant impact from Marcus Nagelstad in the 56th to make it 1-1. And then after a red card to Richard Dixon in the 63rd, Detroit took advantage about 25 minutes later. Yazid Matthews with an electric scissor kick finish past Alec Reddington in the 88th are we to gonna, make it 2-1. Are we going to see a rerun of the game at Hamtrak where uh, DC won 2-1 and Chattanooga were denied that equaliser in the last minute of the game? It's going along the same lines of the same script. <laughs> very, very similar. <laughs> let me be wrong. Let Chattanooga get the equaliser. Please, let me be wrong. Well, it's just a team that you really can't afford to go down a man. Never can. You never can. They will definitely not let you forget that and they will definitely take advantage of you and hold you off and I think DC know how to grind this game out and hold on let's see what Chattanooga have got in their last few reserves of energy as that clock runs away Detroit looking to stay unbeaten on the season remain at the top of the Nisa table which they will do regardless of whatever result comes out of this match and Chattanooga came into this one looking for their first win against Detroit in over a year and Peter Fuller was quite frank about it this week. We need three points in this one. At the moment, three points seems like a stretch, but do they have one more opportunity left as we do hit the 94 minutes and the stoppage time that was given? And there it is. That's the it. final whistle from Alexander Zelyaskov. It is Detroit City 2, 